welcome to how to optimize your LinkedIn profile and land interviews. Free webinar this evening, and I'm going to be teaching you lots and lots about LinkedIn, little tips and tricks, things you can do to improve your chances of landing, you know, better jobs, higher salaries, um, you know, using LinkedIn. So you just tell me, can you see that next slide? Mike, is that okay? Does that come up? Yeah, okay, good. So a little bit about me. Um, I know that some of you, you've already been on some of my webinars, um, so you know a little bit about me already. But uh, I studied electronics, mechanical engineering, got way back in the, the early 1990s. 1995, I joined the military and I served eight years. Um, lots of different places in the military, but in 2003, I left the army and I commenced a 14-year career in the oil and gas industry. Worked all over the place. I worked in permanent positions. I worked in contracting positions. And I eventually became a project manager dealing with technology, implementing technology onto different oil and gas facilities. Now, way back again in 2008, I created a job board called Oil Guru, and this predominantly focused on the energy industry. And on, on this job board, I had a virtual learning environment, a VLE, uh, and I also offered CV writing services. So I've been writing CVs for about 10 years now, uh, written hundreds and hundreds of CVs, 100% positive feedback all the time. I'm very, very conscientious about what I do. And, you know, if you sign up to, sign up with me and you want me to give you my professional services, I will see it through to the end until you are 100% satisfied. Now, in 2017 last year, I decided to close down my job board and focus on other areas which were making money. And these other areas were um, advanced CV writing, not just for the energy industry. I wanted to open this up to anybody. Um, so executives down in London, whether you were in IT, whether you were in, I mean, I've done lots of CVs lately for people in the housing sector and local government. So very, very broad range of skills. Now, um, I also offer LinkedIn optimization the web and graphic design, so I design websites. When, it, when I did the job board, I actually designed that by scratch. So I went on a bunch of courses, web and graphic design, and uh, most recently, advanced CV writing. Uh, I also know a lot about search engine optimization, keywords, how to write material for websites, also how to write material for LinkedIn profiles. Um, I'm also very good at digital marketing, and I provide corporate services. So in my repertoire so far my, my website portfolio probably designed about 12 12 websites and if you go on my website on my website you can see my portfolio on there now who will benefit from this webinar so mike you're definitely going to benefit from this if you think that there's something maybe not quite right about your linkedin profile uh, maybe you're struggling to land interviews um anyone looking to land better jobs higher salaries you know, I, I like this word, supercharging your job hunt. So if you get it right on LinkedIn and you get that right, you get the right keywords in there and you get your summary written in the correct way, all of a sudden you, you start turning around your, your profile and your chances go through the roof. You get people coming, coming to you. Um, if you want to be the applicant tracking systems, now LinkedIn is a massive applicant tracking system. And what I mean by that is um, a job board which has got two databases, one which is profiles, one which is the jobs. And then you have a recruiter that logs into the back end of this and they can scan different CVs. And basically, if you upload or apply for a job, you upload your CV. First of all, you need to beat the robots. You need to beat the computers to get in front of a real person. Um, and that's what um, LinkedIn is. It's a massive, massive, massive job board. Um, also, anyone wanting to promote their own business on LinkedIn, uh, maybe you're a contractor, maybe you've got a limited company and you want to promote yourself on LinkedIn, I can help you do that. So you with me so far, Mike? Just give me the OK. Good, good, good. Right. So after the webinar, hopefully you're going to you will be able to beat the applicant tracking systems. And I talked about LinkedIn being a, a very large applicant tracking system. I'll teach you how to stru structure your title, the best use of keywords and to add value. So it's very important that we always give business benefits when we're writing a summary, not just me, me, me. I can do this, this, this. I can do this. And the benefit for your company is, is this. Um, I'll talk about a value proposition statement. 
and key strengths. Also establishing a keyword skill set matrix. And it's very important on LinkedIn to include this in our summary. So it's different to a CV. On a CV, you would have a professional summary section and then you'd have another section called key skills. Now on LinkedIn, it gives you the ability to do this, to have that key skill section. And, and it also feeds you a bunch of word, words which you which it thinks are appropriate for your job and your title and your sector. But it's also important to use these words inside the summary, inside a matrix. Um, I'm also going to talk about the, the career highlights um, and how to write these using STAR. Now, Mike, you've, you've already seen one of the other webinars, so you should be fairly, fairly familiar with that. Now, I'm also going to talk about networking, how you can network in groups and how you can in, um, get involved with people, other people's posts. And basically, how you can become a market leader in what you do. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what I do in my business, how you could potentially implement that into you, into your own search. Uh, and then at the end, there's going to be other little tips and tricks. So LinkedIn, what is it? OK, it's a massive professional networking site. Now, it's not like Facebook. It's not like Twitter. You know, you need to behave on LinkedIn as if you were going to a seminar or a big networking event face to face. You wouldn't, you know, the way you behave at a face to face networking event is how you need to behave on LinkedIn. So you don't need to be posting pictures, I would say, of your children on there, um, of, of silly things, silly videos on LinkedIn. Maybe if they're videos to do with your sector, yes, use them, get them on there. They can generate a bit of buzz, but make sure it's professional and you keep it professional. Okay, LinkedIn has been going since 2002, and I did a little bit of research. So in 2009, this was taken over by a guy called Jeff Weiner, and basically he turned it around. So these statistics are from 2009 to 2016, and you can see the massive, massive growth which LinkedIn has seen. So currently, they're over. I mean, I haven't got the statistics. I couldn't find a graph online for 2018. I'm sure it's out there, but I couldn't find it. Um, I know that we are in the middle of the 500 million users worldwide. So your market is massive. And the market doesn't just include recruiters and hiring managers. You know, there's business owners on there. So if you've got a service, a product, and you want to do business to business, you know, you can reach out to them, make contacts. You can also reach out to the recruiters on there. So um, what are people looking at? You know, you get professionals on there researching you. You get your peer group looking at you, watching your behavior, you know, reading through your profile, thinking, you know, is, is this true? This guy we used to work with this guy and he's saying he's this, you know, and people will, will spy on you. Uh, you'll get the hiring managers. If you apply for a job, on um, say if you went onto the shell website you applied for a job through their career portal when they receive your cv they're going to do a search on you 100 percent. they're going to search you on linkedin and they're going to make sure that your linkedin profile marries up with your cv so they, they want to look at behavior on linkedin as well um job seekers obviously there's lots of job seekers on there who are looking for work you know that you can search for jobs on there um, you can search for companies you can follow companies and it's very important to do that and also, you know, the recruiters, they source candidates. Now, it is the biggest, I think it is the biggest job database in the world, LinkedIn. So you have to be on there. You have to have a presence on there. So it happened last week with show application. So you did. Yeah, it happened. So you applied and then they probably checked you out. Um, right. Yep. So entrepreneurs, you know, if you've got a business idea, Mike, you want to launch a product, launch a business, before you even launch a website, this is the place to start. So you can set up a company page, you can connect that company page to your profile and get you know get on there what your product lines are, what your services are. Even if you're a contractor, if you're a limited company, providing geology or business development, whatever it is, you know, you can set up that company page. Now, um, Salespeople, so, you know, salespeople can find leads as well. So if you've got a product to sell, you can find business owners on there, the decision makers, and then you can connect with them. Or rather than just doing a hard, you know, cold calling them with a, with a connection request, maybe see what groups are in, make some comments on the threads that they're, that they're involved with. 
they might see this, they might think, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Then, a week later, send them a connection request with a personalized message. And, you know, it's a massive online forum. So, let's go to next. So, LinkedIn do's, what you should be doing on LinkedIn. Your headline, you need to be able to, you know, you need this working for you. It's very important. If you comment on anything on LinkedIn, your headline is appearing, your little image, your profile image. So that needs to be professional. It needs to be up to date and your title is appearing. So what you can use, you can use your title. So if it was business development manager, you'd call yourself business development manager. But at the end of it, you could strap on a little tagline, you know, what the actual business benefit is. Growing businesses in the oil and gas industry since blah, blah, blah. You know, that's going to help you. That's going to sell you. People are going to see that and they're going to possibly be intrigued by your title, click on it, and then go to your profile. But hey, you've got a hit. Uh, you need to add skills to your summary. And I'm going to talk about this skills matrix. So you need to identify the relevant skills, get them inside the LinkedIn summary. Because guess what? LinkedIn is search engine optimized. So if you Google your name, just Google your name, probably what will appear first is your LinkedIn profile above anything else. Then maybe your Facebook profile, then the other social media networks. And then maybe if you've got a website, your website might appear on there. But it just shows the, the strength that LinkedIn has got with the search engines. So, I mean, specifically me, if you Google me, usually I appear before my website. And I push and push and push my website, but you can't beat the, beat, you know, beat the big boys, beat LinkedIn. So it's important that it is search engine optimized or applicant tracking system optimized, ATS friendly. Um, you need to behave on LinkedIn like you would a trade convention, you know, so don't be putting slanderous remarks on there. Don't be putting silly things on there. And I, I recently noticed this on my own profile. Um, there's a lot of oil and gas material, which I happen to like or I share. Um, and I remember last week there, there was a, an incident, some sort of safety incident. I think it was sending someone down a hole. I like that. I shared it. But um, what I noticed is, and I, I, I'm in a unique situation here, I have access to lots of different profiles. When I do my clients' profiles, I've got access to their page. And I often see, if, if they're new on LinkedIn, when I'm building their profile, what I'll notice is whatever I like or I share, boom, it appears on their profile. So you only need to be liking or sharing the relevant information about the relevant sectors because it's going to go everywhere. The people you're connected are going to see it. You like something, you share something, you comment on something, chances are other people are going to be able to see that. So make sure that you're commenting on the right kind of threads, that they're not silly threads, they're professional, and to do with your sector. Um, I've talked about SEO. Endorsements. Endorsements really matter. So it's important, you know, and your connections matter. Make sure that you're connected to the right people, the right people in your industry. Okay, if you're connected with high level people in your industry, if someone's searching for um, a geologist, a petrophysicist, a project manager in your sector, you're going to appear higher in search because you're you're connected with more people in that industry. And also the endorsements matter from people in your industry. If you get them from from someone who is a cleaner, in Tesco's that you happen to be connected with and you know, right? And they're endorsing you. Their endorsement's not going to give as much strength to your profile as someone in your own industry and the higher up they are. So you should also follow companies, follow as many companies as you can to do with your particular sector and the direction you want to go in. So with me, as an example, I used to follow loads and loads of oil and gas companies. That was me. That was where I was going. But these days, um, I'm, I'm a bit more broader than that. So I've started following lots of different companies to do with marketing, to do with design. Um, companies down in London that I want to target. Potential small to medium-sized enterprises that might want to do business with me. And individuals. Um, right, you should use media, articles, blogs. Now, LinkedIn, in a moment, I'm going to share some, some profiles. And, you know, LinkedIn's got this great thing where you can upload media. So if, for instance, you were working on a particular job, I'll give you an example. Say you were instructing in a college or a university and you had a picture of you standing up and instructing someone, you know, in a, in a seminar, giving the instruction and someone took a picture of you. You should use it. Put it there. Picture paints a thousand words. It proves you, you know, the proof, the proof is in the pudding. They see the picture. 
They see what you've written on LinkedIn and the picture backs everything up. Uh, projects, if you've been involved in, in, in big projects, you've got a picture of the project, get that on there. Products, if you've got products, services, brochures, get them on there. You know, it can all help. And also, if you've got ideas, if you're a market leader in what you do, you've got these ideas, you want to get them out, write a blog post on LinkedIn. You can do a normal post, which it just goes in the normal thread. You can also write an article on LinkedIn. You can put links inside there. You can put images inside there. And I try and do one of these each month. And it, it works for me. It, it kind of brings people to me. And what you can do is you can raise yourself up as, um, as an authority in a particular sector. Let's just have a quick thing. So winning work through LinkedIn. How can you do this? So if you search for jobs on LinkedIn and you find the jobs, right? you see the companies, you can do it with Shell. Go on the Shell page. There'll be a link to their Shell jobs inside of LinkedIn. And then what you can do is once you've found the sector it is, you can do a search on LinkedIn and try and connect. So you can go around. This is called going going around the applicant tracking system in through the back door. Now, if you've got connections in Shell or any other company, whatever it is, you can try and find who the hiring manager is, who the person is in charge of that department, who needs a position filled. You connect with him, he's going to have a lot more pulling power and he could push you easily to the top of the pile if you connect with him in a nice way. You can do it by getting introduced on LinkedIn. You could do it by getting introduced. You might know someone that knows him. You could actually ring the guy up, say, hey, can you, can you get me in? Can you get me an introduction? Can you get me this guy's email address? Even better. Or could you pass my CV to him? Could you introduce me to him? You know, maybe you could you could meet the guy if you live in the same town. If the job's that important, you could travel to go and meet the guy. A lot of people do this. This is how people get the jobs. They they push and they push and they push and they go around. They do, you know, they approach job applications in different ways to the norm. Everybody can send their CV in and wait weeks and weeks and weeks until you get a call back. There's other ways of getting jobs. So go around the applicant tracking systems, you know, um, target the companies, um, find, you know, who, who works in your network there and use them to get you in. You know, if it's products, if you're trying to sell products, services, you know, you're a limited company, you're a small to medium sized enterprise, you've got something you want to get onto the market, business to business, or if it's business to consumer like me, um, you can find out who the decision makers are in these companies. Go to the business development managers, search for the keywords on LinkedIn in certain titles, managing directors, business development managers, contract holders, find out who these people are and connect with them. Don't just connect with them cold, you know, try and see what they're doing on LinkedIn, see if they're commenting on anything, get a couple of comments in there first, then send a connection request with a personalized message. So, so important. I receive connection requests every day. I would say probably on the 98% of people put a personalized message. Well, why, why are you connecting with me? If you send a personalized message, I'll guarantee connect with you. You know, and I, I get them all the time. As soon as I get a nice personalized one, oh, that's nice. I reply to the guy or the girl and I connect. And then, you know, you're starting a, a, bit, a relationship. You're starting to build trust, which is very, very important when getting hired or selling a product. Now, um, you need to participate in discussions, you know, to build your profile on LinkedIn. So as you start seeing your network commenting or posting different things, if there's something that you're interested in, get in there, post something. I did it a few weeks ago. There was a new, I've got a question. Lee, what is good introduction line through LinkedIn? Oh, hello, Kevin. Got someone else. Lovely. Right. Get it up, the good introduction line. Yeah, now um, I gave you something like that to Kevin the other day. Um, you know, I don't know if I can find it, Kevin, but what I'll do at the end of this, I will answer your question and I will post in that the the, the little um, piece which I gave you as a comeback if you were getting ignored. The introduction, I'll also post something on here about an introduction, a good introduction. Um, honesty is the best policy, you know, um, uh, and... Also, just going going back to that, when when you're sending someone a message, you know your 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 image appears on LinkedIn, your strap line, you know your title appears on LinkedIn. That's why it's important that it's professional. It's the right pitch, it's the right elevator pitch. 
um, that your profile image is really important that you look like you're approachable, a smile on your face, um, a nice background. OK, look like you're approachable, look like someone wants to connect with you. I see so many images on LinkedIn where people are just look, they look miserable and you, you just you get turned off by the, by the image itself. So I'll get back to that, um, Kevin, and I'll answer that question at the end. So also. So I talked about finding groups, find the decision makers inside the groups. So, you know, if it's oil and gas, if it's a company, you know, look at what the people are following. Go on their profile if you've got access to it. Look at the groups that they're following. Join the groups. See if they're making any comments. Then you can get connect connected, and then you know, into the back into the back door and around the ATS. Um, contact with old clients. Now this is really important. I picked up a couple of jobs a few years ago. Um, so ten years ago, I worked for the company. A um, bunch of contacts there. They'd all progressed in the company to senior positions, decision makers. You know, I connected back with them. Hey, you know, how you all doing? Um, remember me from the project that we worked on? Um, they, oh, yeah, we remember you, Lee. Um, so great success. Um, hey, I'm available again. You know, I'm available for work. Remember me. And chances are they'll, they'll pull you in rather than going down the route of if it's a small company, even if it's a big company. The, I'll give you an example. Uh, Rig Zone or even LinkedIn, I think RigZone charge about a £1,000 a month for a recruiter to be able to log in and post jobs and search a database. It's an expensive process. HR is a really expensive process. So if they, they can save money, they'll save it. Um, there's a lot of small engineering companies out there which don't want to – they haven't got the budget to chuck at HR. So, you know, if you can go direct, they love that. They can save money. Um, you know, most importantly, LinkedIn is where recruiters find people. So you need to make sure that that profile is optimized and you're getting found. Right. So your profile. And in a minute, we're going to get to some some um, some profiles. Your headline. Make sure we've got a value proposition statement in your headline. So your headline will be your position. So with me, I am biz a business and personal branding specialist. And then after that, I've got a bit of a value proposition statement here. You know, I provide um, expertise on CVs, on LinkedIn profiles. I've got a bunch of keywords in there. And it's what you need to do for yourself. Uh, in your summary, don't just, you know, write down, I can do this, I can do that. Put a little bit more detail in there. I can, I can provide this service and the benefit for your company is this. So there's a little bit of psychology behind um, by, if you include benefits in your summary, as someone's reading this, it's like, oh, yeah, he can do this for me. He's done this for someone else. Maybe we can bring him in and he can save us money as well or optimize our process, improve our systems. Think about what they want. Think about the business benefits that the employer wants and that you can give. Um, positions. Uh, you should, in your, in your position, summarize your role, but make sure that you include key achievements inside your role on LinkedIn. It's really important. You know, it makes you stand apart from the competition. Also, showcase your biggest projects. Now, I do this on CVs. So there's a couple of people here who have used my CV service. And I, and I write these career highlights following a method called STAR. So STAR is situation, task, actions, followed by a result. And it's a method that you can use to basically write a case study about a project in a very, very short suite and a way which builds context. So there's an example here. The red area at the top here is the situation. The green area is the task. The gray area are the actions, four or five actions. And then there's a, a yellow, uh, sorry, an orange section at the end there, which is the result. And it's always a measurable result. We get some numbers in there, get some metrics in there. So here, this is Allied Tenesis. Plan to dominate the UK and European markets as UK sales manager drove aggressive market presence. So we've talked about a situation and we've mentioned this particular guy's task. We've talked about his position and his task. He had to drive an aggressive market presence. Then we talk about the actions. So he built relationships with system integrators as key channel partner. The systems integrators, we've also used the abbreviation. So if anyone is searching for SI, or system integrators, it pops up. You can do that on all manner of different keywords. 
uh, manage multi-skilled team in Scandinavia and UK, develop strategic sales plans uh, with resellers and SI partners, analyze market pricing, set margins and manage budgets, and train sales team on products, process, procedures and quality. Stop. They were his actions. So what we've done, we've chucked a load of his keywords, a load of his skills into here, um, basically substantiated his skills in a live environment. And then at the end, we wrap this up with a success. Successfully increased gross revenues from 10 million to 26 million in five years and escalated to worldwide partner status with NCR, which is one of the big clients. So if you can, you know, you've done this with some, you're showing off what you've done with an old company and, and how you've, you've totally transformed um, a client's revenues within five years, get it down there. And this works for any sector, any job, but they need to be project based. Okay, the LinkedIn summary. It's different to a CV profile. Whenever I do LinkedIn summaries, I always put them in first person perspective. The reason I do this is because LinkedIn is more than a CV. It's a forum. You know, you're, you're commenting on things. It's you. Your personality needs to come out in LinkedIn. Your image is there. So it's first person perspective with me any day of the week. Uh, it's an elevator pitch. You know, you have that elevator pitch on there and you, you know, you, you, you want to grab someone's attention. And that's partly part and parcel of what the value proposition statement does. It grabs someone's attention straight off the bat, read on. <clears throat> you need to describe who you are. Like what makes you tick? You know, um, inject some personality into it. Work ethos, philosophy. We've got another question here. The image on my profile is now obscuring my headline due to the LinkedIn format. It seems the headline is congested. Yes, so I'm going to mention this in a little while. When I did your your banner on your profile, uh, your profile image appeared in the middle. LinkedIn did an update about, oh, about, about a month ago, and it shifted the images over to the left. So now when you make LinkedIn banners, you need to make sure that the content is not obscured by your profile image. Now, I can help you out with that, Kevin. It'll be quite a quick fix. So I'll, uh, we'll, we'll connect after this on LinkedIn. Now, you know, think about what it is, what you do for employers that, that they're really interested in and highlight this in the summary, these key skills, these key strengths. Make sure that you're addressing what the employers are looking for. So what you can do is in any market, uh, if you're a business development manager, you can search business development manager jobs on LinkedIn or any big job board. Look at the keywords, look at what they're looking for. Different sectors, it's different keywords. Um, now, pick out some of those keywords, look at what the business benefits is, what they want from one of their candidates and try and get some of that language in your profile as a as a generic profile. When it comes to you know LinkedIn, you can't keep changing LinkedIn all the time. You need a good generic profile on there. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I'm applying for different roles, different positions. They're called different names. On a CV, that's great. You can change the name as and when, when you're applying for jobs. On LinkedIn, I wouldn't advise keep changing this. Everybody sees what you're doing. It doesn't come across very professional. You know, you need to be something on LinkedIn. With the titles on LinkedIn, you can kind of join roles. Like if you're a project engineer or a project manager, you know, both sometimes. Um, you can call yourself that, project engineer forward slash project manager. On LinkedIn, you could do that. That would be fine. On a CV, to increase your chances of getting the callback, if it was an engineer position you're applying for, I would just call yourself the engineer. If it's project manager, just call yourself project manager. It's the way applicant tracking systems work. But on LinkedIn, you know, call yourself both. You need a bit of room to play on that. And again, I said injecting some personality in there. Um, and make it clear, if you're self-employed, if you're a contractor, a consultant, make sure you state that when you know that you're a contractor or you're looking for, perm you know, because if you're not a contractor, you're looking for permanent jobs. If you're a contractor, you're not. Um, sometimes you might think that this is stating the obvious, but it's not to a recruiter who's looking at your profile. Okay, an example of a LinkedIn profile. So here, this is just a breakdown of a profile. Uh, with a value proposition statement at the top, followed by key strengths with business benefits all added in. And then we've got a skills matrix on there. And what you can also do 
is you can use text symbols. These are called Unicode. And if you just Google Unicode symbols for LinkedIn, all manner of stuff will come up. Color ones, black and white ones. And you can use these to kind of spice up your profile. Um, I do find sector specific. If you're working for the government, you might not want to put stars or smiley faces all over your profile. I, I wouldn't go that route. But there's certain, like with me, you know, I'm a branding specialist. I've got lots of this on my profile. I want to look different. But if you go to my profile, there's loads of these on there. And you can just copy and paste them off my profile and use them on your profile, guys. No problem with you doing that. Um, so, we've, you know, we've mentioned here my specialities, or you can say my skill sets. Um, make sure that you bullet list down your skill sets. Words which you think someone's going to be searching for in your industry. You know, put yourself in the hiring manager's shoes and think, what are they looking for? What are they searching for? And get the words in here. Also, get them in the skills section on LinkedIn. Make sure you double up. No problem with doubling up. Just puts more emphasis on a word. Now, in the skills section below, I think you can only get 50 skills maximum. So make sure you're picking the right skills. LinkedIn is quite good at, um, you know, recommending skills to, to use. They're getting found. How do we get found? So we're talking about SEO, search engine optimization, you know, your profile. There's variations on keywords as well. So project management, project manager, lots of different sectors call the same thing, something different. So think about your sector. Think about what the language is now in 2018. Don't use language that they were using in the 1970s. All right. It just won't work. Use language which is up to date and what these companies are using now. And to get these keywords, all you have to do is search the job boards, do a bit of research, background research on your role, or, you know, the direction that you want to go in um, and pull some of these words off, put them on your profile. You'll start when people, when a recruiter is searching or someone's searching on LinkedIn for a particular key keyword or a particular strength in someone that they want, you know, you'll appear higher in that search. Write recommendations for people. Don't just receive them. Write them as well. You know, don't write a recommendation if, if someone was rubbish. But if you if someone was good, you know, write them a recommendation. Um, you, you can. You don't even need to be prompted for it. You can just write a recommendation. Whether they um, put it on their profile is up to them or not. Um, you know, and all these recommendations that you give, they link back to you. So the more you give, the more links you have coming back to your profile, which is very, very good for search engine optimization. It's the same principle with websites. The more links coming back, the higher you go up in search engines. Uh, endorse people. If you want to remind them you exist, you can do this with, with recruiters or maybe a hiring manager. You know, maybe you might not even know them. Just endorse them for something. Ping, you come up on their radar. Oh, why is he endorsed me? Why she endorsed me? They then, they check your profile out. Oh, I'll just check them out. And if your profile is written nicely, it looks good. Hey, they might, you know, want to take it further. Join groups. You know, once you join the group, you're visible to all the other group members. And as you're in this group and they're posting different stuff in the forum, might be a closed group, might be an open group. You might need to be uh, accepted in by the person who's managing the group. You know, you can even set up your own groups. And you know what? I'm going to go into a screen share. I'm going to give you an example. Right. Um, okay. Tell me. You're going to have to tell me when you can see. Tell me when you can see this screen. Can everybody see that? You're just going to need to confirm. So just write in the chat, yes. Okay, great. So this is my wall on my LinkedIn. And they go to my profile. Many, many moons ago, I set up, uh, you can do this with company pages. I've set up company pages. And, and if I just do a search for oil guru, People, locations, more. Right, groups. Right, I set up a group called Oil Guru, Oil, Gas and Energy News. Right, I did this a few years ago. And I did it and I connected it with my old job board. Basically, any of the jobs would go onto here. Now, I've got complete control of this group. I've got, because it's all gas and energy news, people wanted to follow it. And I can post anything I want in here. And I've got, um, you know, I've got an audience 
there's 2,600. You know, I can I can message everyone if I want. If I wanted to tell them about the webinar, I just log into here and I send a message out to all the group, and boom, you've, you've got everyone. Now, not just groups, you can do this with company pages as well. So, as an example, I managed the Bigger Fish company page, and what I've done is I have linked this company page to my website. So whenever I do a blog on my website, boom, it comes over to here. It gets a few more views, and then someone might click on this. So if they're not connected with me, not connecting me, now maybe they're they're following Bigger Fish. I also, I mean, I, I manage a few company pages, but I also did this for a company, my old company, Oil Bureau. And what I've done with this, which is very clever, is I've got a system which is posting news from Rig Zone and other news from around the world about oil and gas into this group. And it just keeps the bit the group busy and it's on autopilot. Now I can come in and I can post anything to this group because I own it or I own this page. So that's something else you can do. Little um, little tips and little things which not a lot of people know about. So I'm going to stop that screen share for now. What's that? Did anybody know about that? Just get back to me in the comments. Is this new information to you? You can set up these groups. You can start a following. That's another question. New for me. Okay, right. Yes. Okay. Right, I'm going to have plenty more little tips and tricks coming in a minute. Okay. Right. So, yeah, participate in discussions. Ask for recommendations. Now, there's a few people on, on our webinar this evening who are good. You know, I've, I've told them. Start getting recommendations on LinkedIn. It's, it's different from the old days. LinkedIn's just changed the game. Old CVs back in the 1980s, 90s, 2000, we used to have the references listed at the bottom, which is all well and good. What we do now is on, on the CVs I produce is I use I copy the recommendations you've got off LinkedIn, put them into the CV because it basically backs up everything above. They don't, you know, you're taking away a step out of the process for the recruiter to hire manager. You know, they might say, can you give us your recommendations? You give them a recommend, or, or, or uh, sorry, a, a, a reference. This happened to me before. I've received a questionnaire. Can you please give a reference for Joe Bloggs, who's working on this project? And then it takes 10, 15 minutes out of your day to do it. People are busy. You know, if you've got the recommendations on LinkedIn, it's faster. It's instant. Oh, this managing director of this company or the CEO of the company or the engineering manager is saying that he can do it, that he delivered results. Um, and it's also important, you know, whether you're selling your yourself or if it's uh, a product uh, a service get it down there like with me every time i do a cv for someone on linkedin optimization i try and get somebody's recommendation get it on my profile because it backs me up and it helps me sell more another question new info good okay right guys i think we're going to go and girls we're going to go slightly over our 45 minutes here is that okay i'm gonna i don't want to rush through this because there's some really good information here interest fine good okay recommendations so um, you know history of recommendations linkedin started in 20, 2002 i don't think they offered them back then i think it only came into play about 10 years ago and it really kicked off now the recommendation system has got better and better and better over the years what you can now do you can either when you receive a recommendation or you give it um, on your profile, it will display that you've, you've given recommendations received. You've actually got the ability now to hide if something, if you've given a recommendation. So that was quite good for me because sometimes a lot of my clients don't like people to know that they've had their CV or their profile written by someone else. So even if they give me a recommendation, they can hide it on their profile. So, you know, it's it becomes, it just disappears. Um so you request these through LinkedIn. They're really easy. Once you've connected with someone, you just go onto their profile and next to it where, where you can message them, there's a three little dots. You click, click the three little dots, it'll have a drop down menu and there it'll say request a recommendation or you can give a recommendation. Um, generic versus unique. So it's important when you ask for a recommendation, don't just use the, the generic message which LinkedIn gives you. Hey, could you write me a recommendation? Be a bit more specific. Hey, John, uh, great to connect with you again on LinkedIn. I remember the times when we worked on this project. Um, 
could you just spare five minutes of your time to write me a brief recommendation? Could you mention the fact that I delivered A, B and C? Thanks very much in advance. Sign off, Lee Woodrow. Um, try and prompt them a little bit. It, you'll, get, you'll get more of a skills-based recommendation rather than a, hey, I worked with Joe Bloggs on this project. He turned up on time. He was a good egg. Thoroughly recommend him, hire him before someone else does. That's not backing up any of your skills or your achievements. Try and get them to validate your achievements, um, any of the business benefits. Maybe they were a senior client and, you know, you saved them a lot of money. Get, tell them to get it in there. It really helps. Uh, okay. Right, other tricks. You can send a personal message when connecting. I talked about this, right? Don't just send out connection requests willy-nilly. If you're going to send a connection request out, put a brief message on there, all right? You know, and, and um, to answer the question here, which came from Kevin, uh, I would use something like, you know, hey, I've seen you commenting on something in this group. We've got the similar interests. Maybe he worked for Shell. You, I also worked for Shell back in the day. Hey, it'd be great to connect. Boom, send something else. Keep it, you know, just keep it on the level. Keep it personal. Get a bit of your personality in there. Send it off. Chances are. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you put any kind of personal message in there, as long as it's not offensive, they're going to connect with you. Okay? Be it. Now, it's sometimes a little bit harder to connect with someone very senior. If it's a managing director of a big company, CEO, someone on the board, executive level, and you're lower down the chain of command, it's hard to connect with these kind of people. You then might need an introduction. But you can't cold call these people who are really senior. You might need to, before you even connect with them, start posting stuff on LinkedIn. Become a market or an authority in your sector before you start connecting with someone, you know, cold. Right. Did you use the same unrelated people to have looked at you? So I've got someone asking a question. Would you do the same to unrelated people who have looked at your profile? Oh, okay, unrelated people. Now... Sometimes having a bunch of unrelated people connecting to you, it's no good. Um, I find, well, I'm talking from a business perspective here as well. Um, I've got, for instance, I've got 5,300 connections, 5,600 followers. Uh, I post something on LinkedIn. There's not always a lot of engagement. If you've connected with people who are interested in doing what you do, you're going to get engagement. You're going to post something on there and you get engagement. And engagement's important. Um, being connected to, you know, sometimes you got, you know, some people, like, I've got 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. Please follow me. And you must have seen this. I can't accept any more connections. That's great, right? But it's not, I don't know if he's getting engagement from all of those people. They might be all over the place. A lot of these people might be very salesy. So try and connect with people in your sector and, and recruiters in your sector. Uh, however, if you, if it's different, you've got a product to sell. You're a business like me. Everybody's an audience for me. I want to connect with as many people as I can. But I don't want to connect with time wasters. I, I mean, during my day consists of in the morning when I wake up, I come straight onto LinkedIn. I look at the LinkedIn. I look at my connection requests. I decide who to connect with and who not to. I don't connect with everyone. I delete a lot of connection requests. Uh, and then after that, I usually post a video on there or something like that to get some buzz going. Um, but, yeah, don't accept everyone. Um, if someone has looked at your profile and they're a recruiter, Mike, maybe they are interested in you. Reach out. Um, sometimes, though, you get you recruit these people connect with you. You send them a message and then they ghost you. It's called ghosting, getting ghosted on LinkedIn. Um, and, you know, they, they're they ghosting. Yeah, it's weird. What's the point of being connected with, with someone who's just going to ignore you when, when you message them? So they're not a good connection to have. Chat. Okay, it happened to me today. Yeah, you people get ghosted. Um, it's not your fault, Mike. Um, I mean, look, you've, you're engaged in today's webinar. You're messaging. You've messaged me on LinkedIn today. It's some people, They maybe they haven't got the time to get back to you. That's one. They might get back to you later. And this happened to Ke uh, Kevin, who's on, on the webinar. This happened to Kevin. And I gave Kevin a nice little message to use if you get ghosted or people are ignoring you, how to grab someone's attention. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, you're introduced and maybe it might lead to a job. So, Kevin, you, you might want to post on there, you know, the, the message and, and what happened there because it worked for you. Uh, what other little tricks? Ah, set up a vanity URL. So not everybody does this. I don't do it for every, every one of my clients. And what I'll do, I'm going to go straight into a screen share again, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So you tell me, tell me when you can see my screen again, just so I know you can see it. Someone just say yes, I can see your LinkedIn. I just want to make sure you can see it. Yeah, okay, good. Right, so on LinkedIn, you can see my cursor moving around. If you come up to me, you go to your profile, you're looking at your profile. Boom. At the top right hand corner here, there's a section called Edit Public Profile and URL. So if you click this, you can actually change your URL. So up here, this is my URL, www.linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash Lee hyphen Woodrow. Now, when you originally set up your profile, you have a little number at the end of this. Now, LinkedIn gives you the option to remove the number. Have your own URL. Remove it. Um, sometimes if you've got a common name, someone might have claimed it already. So you might want to put maybe with me, if someone had claimed mine, I might go Lee Woodrow 78, like the year I was born. I'm going to go back to LinkedIn now and back to stop the screen share and back to the presentation. So that is the vanity URL. Did everybody know about that? Right. You can also move sections around on LinkedIn. So you can move your skills section up. You can move things around. If you want something to appear higher up, there's more emphasis on it. Get it up there. You can also move job descriptions around. So sometimes when you, because it's chronological order, what LinkedIn will do automatically is it'll move a job to the top of your profile. Now, there is a way to shift things around. And as an example, if you were a contractor or a limited company in any particular sector providing a service, uh, you'd want to put your, your company at the top, you know, joeblogs.com, providing whatever, have your logo there and a little bit about you and what you provide. Then you'd want your contracts underneath. Um, LinkedIn gives you the option to move things around. So that's really, really, really useful. Uh, use a banner. You have to use a banner, right? You know, if you go on normal people's profiles when they first start on LinkedIn, you got that big blue banner. So much space wasted. You know, sell yourself. Get your name up there in, in big blue lights. Get a picture of the uh, of the sector that you're involved with, of a project you've been involved with. Get it on there. Maybe like I talked before, if you're instructing, get you instructing up there before. Um, and use some fancy graphics. And, and I, I create these as well. I've done a few for some people who are on, on this call now. Um, okay. Go around the ATS. Find the recruiter, the hiring manager. So I talked about this already. You know, do some research on the company. Find out who the recruiters are in that company. Connect with them directly. You know, send them. You know, please, please check out my profile. You can send documents on LinkedIn. Send them your CV. Just get it, get it to them. The more you do, the, the, the higher your chances are. And recruiter settings, really, really important. Now, I've done this for a few people. This is quite new, the recruiter settings in 2018. So let's look at the recruiter settings. So if you go to your profile and you click you click on me, you'll get a drop-down menu, and there's a little area called settings and privacy. Click on the settings and privacy. Click on the settings and privacy, and then you'll get this box, uh, this, this window open up. You'll have account privacy and ads at the top and communications. Click on the privacy tab. Scroll down until you get to job seeking preferences. Let's say let recruiters know your open top opportunities. Now, LinkedIn, when you first join LinkedIn, it will prompt you for this. You know, there'll be a little message coming up saying set it up. A lot of the time, people just ignore it, ignore it. And then it'll never come up. So make sure that you've, you've got this set up in the back. So, you know, you click change here. And then what will happen is um, the privacy tab will, will still be open. And then it will say update career interests, a little blue ribbon. So click the little blue, the blue text there. And it will take you to this section. And at the top, you'll have a little switch, which will say on and off. Now, I switched it on on my profile just to show you 
what you can write. You can actually leave a note to recruiters in here. You don't need to copy and paste your CV in here, your value proposition statement, nothing like that. Hi, yeah, comma, right? I'm interested in this role, that role. Oh, someone's leaving. I'll catch you later, Ion. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Just put in there what kind of roles you're looking for. If you're looking for contract roles, permanent roles, the geographic location. Yeah, so it's all important. Get it down there. Tell, tell them about your availability. I can be available immediately. I can be available in four weeks, three months. Um, tell them what sort of salary expectations are, whether you're full-time, contract, part-time. There's lots of different areas on here. So make sure you go into there and you set that up. And that's all part and part of, part of my new service is I set that up for, for my clients. Right. A little bit about, you know, evidence that LinkedIn works. This was a testimonial I received about three weeks ago. Um, so I'll just leave you to read that. It works, guys. If you get this set up properly, it works. This particular client, he's seen an 800 in increase in recruiters calling back. That's all on LinkedIn. 800% increase from before, from changing his profile, implementing all these little tips and tricks, making sure that everything is filled out on LinkedIn. All the keywords are in there. Um, I mean, he said five to eight recruiters per week were cold calling me, right? This is no, this is no bull. Right, go on my LinkedIn profile, scroll down, find Craig Hastings. This happened, all right. Um, so yeah, thought leadership. How, what is thought leadership? How have you become the go to person in your sector? You know, it could be you, you've got a lot of industry knowledge, you're all individuals, you've got the industry knowledge, you've got the experience, you've got these ideas. You know, if you've got these ideas about a particular product or a technique, maybe that someone's using a process to, on a project, maybe you've got a better way of doing it, blueprint the idea. Get it out on LinkedIn. You know, put, put an article out there. Um, copyright the idea. Uh, just get it out there somehow. You can blog about it. You can do a video about it. Get published, right? You will then start to become a leading authority in what you do. And that's an example. It's exactly what I've done. Really, I've, re I've only really been pushing my own business for about two years now, stopped working in the corporate sector, and I've just hit LinkedIn hard. I've got videos out there. I've got loads of articles out there about writing CVs, LinkedIn, videos, images. It all links back to my website. It works. People come to me. They now see me as a go-to person for CVs. Um, and, you know, I'm very, very good at it now, and, and it works. And it's working on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the social media uh, platform where the breadwinners are. You haven't got the stay-at-home stay wives and the girlfriends and the, the, the people who are on the doll on LinkedIn. They're all professionals. They're the breadwinners. They're, they've got the money. The, the audience is there. Right, you could set up a group or a network. And I told you about Oil Guru. I've demonstrated that already. You know, set up a group, set up a company page. Um, very, very important to set up a company page. Um, you could even run a webinar like me. Uh, it's not for everyone. I would say that you need the personality for it. You need some presentation skills um, and you need a little bit of technology background to do it. But if anybody is out there listening that has business ideas, I can teach people how to do this. Just come to me, send me a message, PM me on LinkedIn and um, we can hook up and I can teach you the systems I use to, to make my business happen. Um, yeah, and video, videos, let's talk about videos. I've done some experimentation with videos lately, videos of myself. If I post um, an article on there, I might get 200, 300 views, maybe a couple of people like and share. I post a video on there, I get five times more the engagement. I get people liking, I get people sharing, people commenting. Everybody loves loves videos these days. You know, jump on the bandwagon. Um, it's the video, the whole video thing is not going to last forever. Get on it now. LinkedIn company pages, right? Um, I'm now going to jump into a quick screen share. screen so with LinkedIn company pages 
if you click work, you get this pop-up there that comes up. Uh, I, you know what? A few weeks ago, this was coming down in a drop-down menu. It's different now. So LinkedIn is evolving all the time. There's always updates on the mobile app and on and on the desktop version. But look, there's a little tab down there, create company page. You've got your own company. Do it. Create the company page. Now, if I go to one of my company, for instance, my company page, Digger Fish, right, it's really important that you, I've got control of this, I can change the logo here. Now, once you've uploaded the logo on a company page and you've got a description of all this, you've also filled out all the specialities because this is all searchable on LinkedIn, right? Once you say, you know, when you're filling out your career profile where you used to work, with me, how I have got, if I go to my profile now, there, business and personal brand specialist at Bigger Fish. Usually what people do, they say they're working at a company. It doesn't exist on LinkedIn. You need to physically make the company page. Once you've made it and you've put a logo on there, that logo appears on your profile. You look way more professional than someone who doesn't know how to do this. So it's something it's, it's if you're good at it, good at you know a little bit of graphic design, you maybe you've got a logo, pop it on here. It'll just make you look miles ahead of the competition. I'll stop the screen share. So upload a banner, upload a banner to the um, the company page. Really important. A brand image. Make sure if you've got a website, you're using the same colours, the same fonts, and the brand is across the board. So people aren't getting confused with, with who you are. Um, also, you can link these company pages to your blog. Uh, and every time you post news articles on there, it'll go to your company page. Right, so we're nearly finished here. I know I'm now 15 minutes over, but I'm gonna we'll get through this. The new LinkedIn layout. So I've done a couple of blog posts on this on my website. Also on LinkedIn, you can see this. So like I say, um, the reason that some of these old banners are now the text is getting covered is because the profile image has moved over to the left. The name and the headline has now moved over to the left. It's left aligned. There's a new summary preview. It's increased from 220 to 300 characters. So you can get a lot bit more content in there, what people can read. Um, also, your company logo now appears at the top of the profile. So again, if you're self-employed, really good to have your company logo up there. Or if you're working for a big comp corporation, that will appear. Your education also appears here. So if you if you work um, you you qualified at a big university and you've got that listed in your profile, the university will be listed here. Also, there's a little tab which you can see the person's connections and you can also see their contact information if you're connected. If you're not connected, you click this. It will show you the LinkedIn profile contact and the, and the website if they've got a website. So really important to get that on there. And also something which is new really important is you've got six media thumbnails now appear in some in the summary so with me i'm you know i'm selling services i get that in there you could put pictures of projects in there you could put you know i don't know some an image of your cv in there anything anything you've been involved with get it in there really important so you know there's an example of my profile we've already looked at this but you can see how i'm using my banner i've got my logo in here the colors i'm using match the logo, they also match LinkedIn, and I've got lots and lots of content on there. And in the, pro in the profile picture, I'm smiling. I'm inviting people in. Really important to smile, guys. So, again, here's some examples of some CVs and LinkedIn profiles, which I've done. Uh, Kevin, I think you're still online. This was Kevin's CV. This was an applicant tracking system version of his CV, and this was the banner. Now, I know Kevin needs this redone. Um, so we need to move this this text here to the other side or, or maybe I suggest just removing it um, so your image would appear here. This was a creative style CV I did for Kevin. So um, the previous one was a four page applicant tracking system optimized CV. These often end up on three or four pages because of the layout and how applicant tracking systems scan these. They need to be laid out in a certain way with the correct titles. Now, the correct, the creative style CVs I do, you, you're going to be applying for a job person to person here. You've got someone's email address. You connect them with them on LinkedIn. You can send them the file. So a PDF version of a fancy CV like this really does get the wow factor. And here you can see we've utilized the sidebar. So the first page on this CV has got loads of information. The second page has got the rest of the information. And it just, just stands apart from the competition. Not everybody does this. 
Um, you know, this is some more. This was a guy called Graham Hay. I've got everybody's permission here. Graham's given me his permission to, to showcase his stuff. This was a LinkedIn banner I did for Graham. So this was a, a rig which he worked on. So personal to him, we used that into his banner. But I can, you know, any kind of image. Uh, and again, Graham had a four-page applicant tracking system CV for online applications on RigZone, Oil and Gas People, on, on LinkedIn, on corporate websites. And then his LinkedIn profile, you know, just it looks completely different. A lot of people don't even bother with the banner. Now, this this was his CV, slightly different CV. Oh, hang on, no, I still got a question. That looks amazing. <laughs> okay. Right, so Graham Hayes CV, slightly different. I've got loads of these templates. I develop bespoke templates. If there's particular colors you like, fonts you like, you just tell me what you want, and I make them specific to your requirements. OK, not, every, you know, there was somebody who came to me the other week. I don't want two pages, Lee, I want three pages. I've got more content. So we did three pages. Uh, this Graham had a matching cover letter. So I did a real fancy cover letter to match the style of his CV. Uh, resources. If you go on my website, there are templates ready for download. If you want a good crack at this yourself, um, you can get the applicant tracking system friendly CV. It's only 99p and the, uh, the fancy creative style CVs. I don't sell... All my designs, I sell some of them, they're only $2.99, so get on the website. And I also offer a free CV writing guide, which has got lots of information about, you know, LinkedIn in there as well. So if you just go to my website, biggerfish.co.uk, um, find the tab which says free CV writing guide, put your details in here, and then you will get the, the, the guide, the PDF. Uh, it also talks a little bit about me and my services. Now, this is the part where anyone who's still on the webinar, I'm going to offer you all some discounts on the service. So thank you guys and girls for staying to the end. Really appreciate it. 